In this video, we're going to properly start talking about trigonometry by focusing on the trigonometry of right triangles. One of the fundamental things that makes trigonometry of right triangles work is properties of similar triangles. So what are similar triangles? Well, when we have two triangles that have the same angle measures, we call those triangles similar. So in these two triangles I've got here, the angle here at P would be the same measure as the angle at D, the angle at Q would be the same measure as the angle at E, and the angle at R would be the same measure as the angle at F. And when that happens, it turns out that the ratios between the lengths of the sides of these triangles are equal. So for example, if I knew that the distance from P to Q was, let's say, the number A, and the distance from P to R was the number B, and let's say I knew that the distance from D to E was the letter C, and the distance from D to F was the letter D, well, A corresponds to C, B corresponds to D, so we would say that the ratio of A to B would equal the ratio of C to D. So the ratios within each triangle are the same. So how is that useful for right triangles? When, well, a right triangle is a triangle that has one angle measuring 90 degrees. And so if we have an acute angle, so the word acute there just means that it's an angle that's greater than zero and less than 90, then we can form a right triangle that has a 90 degree angle and then another angle that measures that value theta. Um, and so that is going to be a right triangle that we can create using those angles. Um, just one word of terminology here that we're going to use a little bit later. So when we have a right triangle, the side that is opposite of the right angle, we call that the hypotenuse. So that's a word that we're going to be talking about a little bit later. Another property of right triangles that's useful uh, is the Pythagorean theorem. Now this also relates to a naming convention, a labeling convention that we often use with these right triangles. So if the right triangle is labeled ABC, capital A, capital B, and capital C being the three points of this triangle, then the side opposite capital A, we often call that little a, the side opposite capital B, we often call that little b, and the side opposite capital C, we often call that lowercase c. That's really common naming convention. And when we do that, the Pythagorean theorem is going to tell us that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the lengths of the sides of the triangle, if we square those and add those together, that gives us the square of the length of the hypotenuse. OK, so how is this all related to the uh, similar triangle situation? Well, when we have an angle measuring theta and another angle measuring 90 degrees, the sum of the three angles of my triangle has to be 180, which means this third angle up here turns out to be 90 minus theta. And this one would also have to be 90 minus theta. But that means that these two triangles are going to be similar. So the ratios of the lengths of the sides of these two triangles will be the same, no matter how big or how small these triangles are, as long as we've got one angle 90 degrees and one angle theta, that determines the whole triangle. Now the lengths themselves will probably be different but the ratios between the lengths will be the same. And that's really the key idea of trigonometry. So let me say it again. In these two triangles, because we've got one angle measuring 90 degrees and the other angle measuring theta, the lengths of these two triangles will probably be different. The actual distances themselves will not be the same. But what will be the same is the ratios between the lengths of the triangles. And we call those ratios trigonometric functions. There are six ways to form ratios between two out of the three sides of this triangle. And so there are six different trigonometric functions. So the sine function, so, so these three letter uh, abbreviations are the common abbreviations we use. So SIN stands for the word sine, S-I-N-E. This is cosine. TAN stands for tangent. COT stands for cotangent. SEC stands for secant and CSC stands for co-secant. So you may notice that half of these start with the two letters CO and the other half don't. We'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. We'll talk about that in the next video. So the ratios here are that the sine is B over C, cosine of the theta is A over C, tangent of theta is B over A, cotangent of theta is A over B, secant of theta is C over A, and cosecant of A theta is C over B. Now to make that a little bit easier, because if we look at all those six formulas, you might think, well, how in the world am I gonna memorize all that? So there's a very common mnemonic device. Mnemonic is just a fancy word that's, that means you, know, you, you memorize, sometimes it's like a little song that you sing, sometimes 
it's a, an abbreviation. In this case, it's an abbreviation. Sokatoa or Sokatoa, some people pronounce it different ways, uh, stands for the idea that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so what does all that mean? So we have our angle theta here, and we know that the side labeled C here, that's my hypotenuse. And if we think about the angle theta, the, the side opposite theta, that's this side B. So that's what we call that opposite. And then the side next to the angle theta that isn't the hypotenuse, we call that the adjacent. And so what we see, and this matches up with our formulas on the previous page, when we say that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, what we mean is that the sine of theta is the opposite side, which is B, divided by the hypotenuse side, which is C. The cosine of theta, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so the cosine of theta is the ratio of the adjacent side, A, divided by the hypotenuse, C. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent. That tells me that the tangent of theta is the opposite side, B, divided by the adjacent side, A. Now that doesn't get us the other three trigonometric functions, but we're gonna talk about, when we start talking about identities, we're gonna talk about ways of figuring out the other trigonometric functions once you know some of these opposite hypotenuse and adjacent sides. So we'll get into ways that you can make it a little bit easier to figure out all six of these functions. But let's just do an example before we get into any of those identities and shortcuts, which we'll talk about in the next video. Um, so let's say we had a right triangle with angle theta, and the opposite side measures 6, and the hypotenuse measures 10. So that's going to look something like this. So there's my right angle, there's my theta, the opposite side measures 6, the hypotenuse measures 10, and we want to find the six trigonometric functions of theta. So what we're missing here is the adjacent side, little a. But what we know is that the, uh, the Pythagorean theorem tells us that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which in this case, a squared plus 6 squared equals 10 squared. So a squared plus 36 equals 100. a squared equals 64. So a is going to be plus or minus 8, but a is a distance. a can't be negative. So that means that this a is actually the number 8. So now we can figure out all six of our trigonometric functions. So from our SOHCAHTOA, we know that the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's 6 over 10, which reduces down to 3 over 5. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's 8 over 10, which reduces down to 4 over 5. The tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, so that's 6 divided by 8, which reduces down to 3 fourths. Now for the other three, we don't have a fun uh, mnemonic device for that, but we can just go back and look at our formulas. So we know that the cotangent of theta it turns out to be adjacent over hypotenuse, uh, sorry, adjacent over opposite, so that's going to be 8 divided by 6 which is going to be 4 thirds. The secant of theta is hypotenuse over adjacent, so that's 10 over 8. That's going to be 5 over 4. And then the cosecant of theta, that's going to be hypotenuse over opposite, so that's 10 over 6, which again reduces to 5 over 3. So for the moment, Sokotoa can help us figure out sine, cosine, and tangent pretty easily, and then the other three we have those formulas that we can look at. The good news is that the sine, cosine, and tangent really are the more common trig functions that we'll use. We will see co cotan, secant, and cosecant occasionally, but really most of the work in terms of applications and what we actually do with trigonometry are typically handled by sine, cosine, and tangent. So Sokotoa is a handy thing to know because those are the ones we're going to see most often. Okay, so what did we do in this video? So we talked about similar triangles. We talked about how when two triangles are similar, the ratios between the sides are equal, and that allows us to, to, to define trigonometric functions just in terms of the angle itself. It doesn't matter how big or how small the triangle itself is, as long as we know what that acute angle is, we can figure out the ratios, and those will be the same regardless. We talked about the Pythagorean theorem. We'll come back to that again in the next video. And we also talked about the six trigonometric functions of acute angles. Uh, and again, SOHCAHTOA is a little handy device that helps us remember the relationships for those three uh, more important trig functions. So next time we're going to be talking about fundamental identities, which are useful relationships between those six trigonometric functions involving some of the Pythagorean theorem and other relationships that we've already started to look at in this video. I'll see you then.